Hey, a very good morning to you. Welcome to our uh, our Facebook Live today. Uh, my name's Scott Morrison. I'm the host of this group, so we are broadcasting this right now just in the uh, uh, the food truck and market or food truck and shop marketing Facebook group. It's a group I started a couple of years ago um, with the intent of just helping everyone grow their food businesses. We have our own food business of a food trailer uh, called Snowmos. That's a shaved ice business. I'll show you a little bit about that here in a couple of minutes. Um, but the whole point of this group is to, to help you guys all with marketing, with uh, helping you get customers out to your shop. Uh, I understand that world very well. Uh, you create something, you create a business, you create something locally, especially, and you want to make sure you get people and get customers coming out to that business. So that is the whole point of this group. So excited that you're here and excited that you're you're a part of this and you're part of the group. If you have other food truckers or food shop owners that you know, invite them to be a part of it. So today's topic is a little unique. I had never done this hook before. I've never done done it from, from this approach before. We're going to talk about what's here on the screen, how to start a shaved ice business for less than $2,000. We're going to dive in a lot of meat with that, give you some specifics, help you understand how to do it. Um, I've had a few uh, a few naysayers, we'll say, people who don't uh, don't believe me or don't see that. Uh, we'll address that as well, but we're going to dive in and just talk a whole bunch about how to really grow and how to, I'm sorry, how to establish a food business or a shaved ice business, the right way to do this, how to do it for less than $2,000. I'll show the numbers on doing that as well and uh, really help you guys get going if that's something you're interested in doing. So welcome. I see a few people jumping in the live stream right now. If you're uh, if you're here live, welcome. Leave it in the comments. Let me know that you're here, that you can hear it. Uh, let me know where you're from or maybe you're the name of your business. If you're watching this on replay later on, you can do the same. I will see many of those comments later uh, later on after the, the replays are, are posted here in the group. So uh, if you're seeing this uh, and it's not live, let me know you're listening to it as well. I would love to see and uh, hear from you also. So with that, let's kind of just dive into our, our presentation here. I put together a few slides for you and we can just walk through how to do this, how to start a shaved ice business for less than $2,000. Now, I understand the onset. That's a very bold claim. Um, you know, and we'll talk about why I see that, but starting a business for just $2,000 isn't something most people even think is possible. Um, these businesses can be expensive. Uh, shaved ice and food businesses, there's tens and lots of thousands of dollars. Lots of money goes into it. Um, as I started talking and sharing that I was going to do this, I heard from I've heard from the, the the crowd here a little bit from a few of the haters um, saying there's no way this is possible. That you can't do it. Uh, one guy said very sarcastically to me, he's like, I got to see this. Um, just not believing that it was possible. Someone else left a comment on one of our posts saying a good machine alone is $2,000. I spent way more than that to get started. So don't be fooling people. And let me just promise you this in the onset. This is not fooling at all. I'll show you exactly the numbers. It'll show you exactly how it works and how it's um, not only possible, but it might even be a smarter way to do it. Um, so with that, let's kind of address what I'll call the, the elephant in the room here. All right. The elephant in the room is this. Does it cost more than $2,000 to start a shaved ice business? And to answer that, it's a yes and a no. So let's start with the yes side of this. I myself have a shaved ice business. There it is. I'm standing in front of it. Snowmo shaved ice. We're in Orlando, Florida. And it spent, we spent close to $20,000 to get this business up and running. Um, it took years of thinking about it, months of learning, literal blood, sweat, and tears. If you've watched some of my other classes about how to get started with shaved ice businesses, I tell stories about um, just how difficult it was to get up and running. Uh, here we were in Florida. And for whatever reason, there weren't many shaved ice businesses around. So we saw an opportunity. Um, my wife and I both have business backgrounds. So we understand how to run business, but we didn't know the, the shaved ice. We didn't know the food truck side of it. So we had to learn um, that spent tons of time. I think my wife researched every single page uh, of the internet about how to learn and how to start a shaved ice business. And the, the literal blood, sweat and tears, that's true. Um, the blood just from, you know, nicking my hands on building something or doing something and sweat because it's hot here. But the tears, I remember a very vivid moment sitting inside a government office here in, a, it was a county office in Florida, trying to get something approved, trying to get something different, or trying to get something up and running um, that they were not playing nice with me. And I was at the end of my rope and I literally started crying with this lady, like, please, can you just approve this permit for me? I need this. And eventually it all worked out and eventually got up and running. So I'll just tell you from the onset, we spent a lot more than $2,000 to get our, our uh, shaved ice business up and running. But there's a different approach on how to do this that if I were to go back in time, I probably would do this approach instead uh, of, of way we did it. We did it the traditional go find a shop. We bought a trailer. You can buy a brick and mortar building or rent one or you can buy a truck or whatever. You can do that. And, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of overhead in doing that. Uh, that's the approach we went. And I don't regret it. I don't uh, think it was a mistake, but as I think back, I was like, man, we took a ton of risk in order to do this. You know, we didn't know if it was going to work or not. We hoped it would. We thought it would. We 
we forecasted numbers expecting that it would. But then end of the day, I didn't know for sure if this was really going to work or not. And as I've worked with tons of different business owners um, over the last couple of years, I, I've kind of seen a pattern that may work a little bit better. Um, I've done, I don't know how many free consultation calls with people. A lot of times people reach out to me or I see them in the different Facebook groups saying, I want to start a shaved ice business. I'll jump on a call with anybody. If you want to talk through some specifics and how to do it, or you want a little bit of help, be happy to do that with you. I have a program as well. Shaved Ice Academy walks you through a bit more specifics uh, or more in depth the specifics on how to get up and running. Um, but as I've, I've talked to a lot of people doing this, I realized that there is a less risky approach in how to do this. So in order to do it, though, what I'm going to share with you, there's a couple of requirements for me, a couple of things you need to be willing to do. You need to be willing to put yourself out there. Now, you're probably willing to put yourself out there as it is if you're willing to open up your own business. Uh, what I mean by putting yourself out there, you have to get past the risk of like, what if it's not going to work? Am I going to look stupid? I don't really know what I'm doing. And I have to get attention from people. That all is part of starting a business, especially a little brick and mortar business or a food business or something where you're going to want to get people to come out. So you got to be willing to put yourself out there. Um, you've got to be willing to put in the work too. None of this is easy. Okay. It's a simple concept, but it's not easy to execute because you have to actually go out and work. And if you're one of those who wants to sit at home and collect the government checks or uh, have someone else work for you, this is not for you. But I think for most of you, if you're even sticking around, if you're listening to this, then you are willing to work. You're willing to, you, you have the work ethic. You have the drive. You're willing to see what happens with it as well. And you have to be do a smart approach. Now, the smart side of it, I'll help you with that. We're going to talk about um, the specifics. I'll walk you through kind of the best way to do this and really kind of help you so that you're not just guessing. What you're doing is you're setting up something. You're, you're establishing something in a way that's actually going to work out for you. So those are a couple of the requirements you have to have and up and running. Now, before we dive in, I want you to take a minute now uh, for yourself, wherever you're at, sit down and ask yourself a couple of these questions. What is your goal? So why do you want to establish this business? And kind of a cousin to that is why do you want to have your own business? I can tell you from personal experience, um, I've been around entrepreneurship for a long time. And for me, it's freedom, freedom to kind of do what I want to do when I want to do it. I'll tell you a funny story, actually. Um, I was working for a company. This is um, this is a long time ago. It was probably about 15 years ago. Um, Actually, no, it was less than that. It was 12 years ago because what was happening is my wife was pregnant um, with one of our kids who are now 12 years old. And this was right before Thanksgiving. And I remember telling my boss saying, listen, my wife's going to be induced the week before Thanksgiving. So I'm going to take that week off of work. And then the week of Thanksgiving, we're closed anyway. So I'm going to be off that week as well. Just it was a, it was a sales job as an office job. And I remember him sitting there and thinking, and I see, you know, you ever, you ever see somebody about to say something stupid or have a bad idea? I see this guy like, hmm. And he says to me, he's like, hey, do you think maybe they could wait to induce your wife a week so you're only missing the week of Thanksgiving? And I remember like thinking, what, are you kidding me? You want her to like stand there and hold the baby in? Like, are you serious? Do you understand what you just said there? And I realized in that moment and thinking about it a lot of times, like, man, I just want freedom. I just want to do what I want to do what I want to do it. Now, owning your own business does not give you full license to do that. I want to be very clear. There is a commitment and I probably, I definitely work way more hours than I used to, but it's my own freedom to do what I want. This Friday, I'm going on a field trip with one of my kids. Then you have to think twice about it. Then I have to get permission for it. Um, with our business, I can kind of do uh, what I want. I have a lot of mentors and advisors and things, and people to help me. But in the end, you can kind of do whatever you want. So before we really dive in on this, be very clear on your answers. What are your goals? Why do you want to have your own business? What's really important to you? Now, while you're doing that, let me just tell you a little bit more about kind of who I am and kind of how I got to this point. As I said, I've been doing entrepreneurship for well over 15 years. Now, either only my own things. Um, I've worked with a couple of companies that have supported entrepreneurs, some on the technology side or um, just on the coaching side of things. I've worked with countless entrepreneurs through the years. I've owned some very successful businesses. I've had a lot of failures as well. So I kind of understand both sides of the fence. What you see me in the picture they're standing in front of is our shaved ice business. It's a six figure year business. Um, the location we're at now, this will be our fourth year at the location um, that we, we have it set up at. It's a trailer parked in a gas station parking lot. We have benches and lights and things like that. So the community comes to there. We also do uh, events. We do a lot of those on tabletop or we'll do catering. We do other things with the business. We do the, the to-go kits. Um, we're here in Florida, which there's no snow. So we did this winter a couple of times, the snowball kits where people got a, you know, a, a, a cooler from us full of snow and they can make their own snow. So we do a lot of things around the shaved ice world. With that, after I got things established in there, I created the Shaved Ice Academy, which is a, a different program that's the A to Z in how to do everything to set up, you know, a food trailer or a brick and mortar company or to get like a full business established. 
Um, and then also I created a program called uh, Food and Ice, which is a marketing program that really helps other food truck owners to be able to um, to get their, their their business out there, how to market their business, how to get attention. Um, so I have a whole program. So I have a lot of other things. So I've been around this industry for a long time and I've, I've learned a lot and I've made a lot of mistakes and I've really, um, really enjoyed and love it all at the same time, though. It's been very cool and been a very fun industry and business to be a part of. So let's tell you a couple of stories, though, and really want to kind of dive into the meat and potatoes, what I want to share with you today and kind of this method and how you can start your own shaved ice business for uh, less than $2,000. So what I'm going to share with you, even though I've talked about shaved ice this whole time, I'm going to tell you about some of my friends here in Orlando, and they run a bagel shop. Now they're kind of the perfect example for what I'm looking at, what I what I want you to understand here. Now, as I'm telling you their story a little bit, I want you to think about like what you know, what's the underlining tone here? What did they do? How did they get their business established and up and running? And how can you kind of do the, the same thing as well? So they have, <clears throat> excuse me, a the best bagel shop around here in Orlando. It is amazing. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, anytime I go there, I post about them because it's good. Um, the food's amazing, but I also love because they are family owned. So this is a husband and wife couple, Jeff and Danielle. They run it together. Um, kind of came out of necessity back in 2019. Jeff is doing some corporate stuff. Didn't work out for whatever reason. So kind of the, the same story as me. He wanted some freedom. So he decided to start doing bagels. He's from New York, down here in Orlando now. So he knew the bagel industry very well. Danielle still continued to work a corporate job till this kind of got up and running. But they're as family owned as it can possibly be. Now, the way they started was this. They started doing pop-ups, doing events, doing farmer markets, and doing um, uh, made to order. So you can order online some bagels, and there's a certain day they'd either deliver to you, you'd go pick it up. So they started in as, as basic as beginnings as you could possibly be. So at their point, they would bake a lot of the bagels out of their kitchen and out of a commissary, whatever they had to do to kind of be compliant and legal. But they didn't have a shop. They didn't have a following. They had a little money to get started on this, but they kind of really just started with nothing. And But they did have the dream and the hope and something that they wanted it to become and something they wanted to grow into. So that's how they started. Now, they're really smart in how they did this because as they got started and got things established, they also built a following. So they they started using social media, which is incredibly, incredibly powerful. And they started getting people to pay attention and they get people following them on their Instagram and their Facebook pages. They did a little bit of TikTok. They built an email list. They put up a website and they did, frankly, some very basic things that is not too complicated to get up and running. And that helped them establish the following. So what happened is they'd go to a farmer's market, for example. They would sell their bagels that they had made already, or they would have you pick up the bagels that were pre-ordered there. You get your bagels, you would take a picture with them, or they'd do some pictures or, or ask you to take a picture later. Um, they would give you a card encouraging you to follow them on, on Instagram. And the word just kind of started spreading. So instead of them creating their own audience, they went to where an audience was already. So instead of them creating their own customers, they went to where customers were already. In this case, it was farmer's markets or pop-ups or events that were kind of already established. And they went to those and they, um, again, they were just able to build a following behind it. So with this though, they had some pretty big dreams and, and, and uh, aspirations. They didn't just want their own, uh, they didn't want to just keep doing this model. They wanted a brick and mortar location. They wanted a retail location as they call it. So what you're looking at here on the, on the left, they established a GoFundMe page. And as you see, they raised $21,353. I actually ended up being a lot higher than that. I think they were closer to thirty thousand uh, dollars of people that supported them for opening their their retail location. Who do you think was supporting them? It wasn't their family or their friends. I'm sure they did a little bit, but it was that audience that they had created. It was that following that they established because they were had a good product. People wanted it. They sold it to them, and then those people came out. And then once once the Jeff and Danielle said, "Hey, we want to start our own uh, brick and mortar location," people supported it like crazy. So what happened? So they opened up their first location, a little city called Zakoe. Uh, it's a cute little shop. It's in a strip mall. It was a good location. They got it for favorable rent because this was around 2020. Um, and so rent was kind of weird at that point because of COVID stuff. Um, and they opened this. And then the wildest thing, and this is where I started hearing about their story. I didn't know about the, the pop-ups in the farmer's markets. But at this point, every single day that they opened, which was five days a week, they would sell out every day. And they wouldn't sell out like, you know, at the end of the day, they would open it like seven in the morning and they'd be sold out by 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. Every day they did it. 
And again, the reason why is because they had built a following. They had established a following. They had people who were excited about what they're doing and they wanted more, more of that. They wanted to, they wanted their bagels. They want to be part of it. From there, they grew. So they had an opportunity in College Park, another area close by to here. There's a bagel shop that was closing. They were able to take over the, the, the rent and the equipment and all that. And they moved into there and now they have a second location. Guess what happened in the second location? The same types of things as most days they would sell out. <coughs> Excuse me, it wasn't every single day, but most days they would sell out because of uh, the demand and because of the excitement. Now, how did all this start? It all started because they just went out to establish events already and they built the following. So what did they do right? I think there's a handful of things that they really did, did right here. And give me a quick second, I need to take a drink of my water. But what they did right is instead of investing a ton in, in uh, equipment in a building and all that expensive stuff it comes to starting a business, they tested their market. So they're like, hey, we can make bagels inexpensively. We can buy a little bit of equipment. We can spend some money on doing that. And then we're going to go to the markets and we're going to go to the local places and we're going to see if it works. And as they did that, they also perfected their products. So they established, okay, this is the types that people like. More people are buying this, this type of bagel versus a different type of bagel. Or they could test other things. They could try out other things because the menu was flexible. It changed every time that they had an event. So they perfected their product and what it was they're trying to sell. They made money doing this as well. It wasn't they, they went out to these places and they made no money or they broke even. They made a profit. Because there was a demand, there was customers there, and then they took that money and just kept reinvesting it into other things they want to do. And then because they and, and they, they were doing this, they got a lot of reps, meaning they got a lot of experience, and they built that customer base so that when it's time to go out and say, hey, you know what, we are going to open up our own business or open, um, sorry, open our own location now. They had a customer base who's willing to support them. They supported them in two ways. They supported them big time with the GoFundMe. And then every time the door the doors would open, they supported them by showing up there as well and uh, coming and buying bagels for them. It's a pretty cool story. I love I love seeing like how they really established it and how they put all that together. So that was bagels. This is about shaved ice. So will his model work for shaved ice? Is if I were sitting in your shoes, I'd be kind of asking asking the same question of that right now. Is Willis work? So let me introduce you to this. This is Hillbilly Shaved Ice there in Robbins Robbinsville, uh, North Carolina. Um, Allison Grooms runs this. Um, and I've been trading some messages back and forth with her and she's one of dozens of other shaved ice businesses I found kind of did the same type of thing. So here's a little bit right there in the middle. You can see it says this year will be our ninth year. I've started with a machine with only 10 flavors in a tent and started as a hobby. Now they have over 60 flavors, a trailer, and they're doing a bunch of other stuff as well. They're doing cotton candy, funnel cakes, pork skins, candy corns, and much more. And as she puts it pretty much anything that's unhealthy <laughs> because it's another full-time job that I love. So they established the same type of idea. They went, they found local uh, businesses that they started on with a small machine and they started on tabletop and grew it into something that nine years later, they're up and running. Do you know statistically how hard it is to keep a business open for nine years? It's like less than 2%. Within the first three years, most businesses go out of business, but to see a business estate established for nine years, that's incredible. What that means is a couple of things. One, they're making money. I don't think Allison and Hillbillies is going to stay in business if they're actually making money doing this, but they're also providing a value or they're providing something to customers, something that they want. In this case, their, their, their product, and they've been able to do it in a way that fits in their lifestyle and something they're happy to do. So what am I saying with all this for you guys? What do you, what do you, what do you think I'm getting at here? I'm trying to, trying to um, suggest for you. <clears throat> my, my concept of this whole thing is this is instead of investing in an expensive trailer or a shop or equipment or machine, start with events that are already happening, okay? Start with things that are already there, that are already established, that you can just kind of be a part of. So that's the farmer's markets, other local events. There's a bunch of local events and things that are going on. It could be catering. It could be other things as well. But for the shaved ice world, start it on a tabletop, start it under a tent, and use an affordable machine instead of buying the, the very expensive, high-quality machines. Um, that are great and that you might want to grow to later on, start with something that is a little bit more affordable that can kind of get you going and get you up and running. And I'll explain here through the rest of this kind of the ways to do that and how, how it can really work for you. But here's why I see these this method is better than doing what I do, which is spending $20,000 on getting up and running. With this instead, you can test the waters, you know, kind of like these two shops did. They went out and saw, is this going to work or not? You know, that's one of the scariest things I find when you start a business is you sit there and you look at this and and you're telling yourself or your spouse or your family, you're thinking like, I think it's going to work. Yeah, I, th I, th I think I think that'll work. 
And we all have good intentions and there's definitely models and, and ways to, to evaluate and wisely say if this something's going to work or not. But there's nothing better than taking what you have, making it available for sale and seeing if people buy it or not. So you can test, is that going to work? Now, past testing, is are people going to buy it or not? You can then decide, is this the type of thing I want to sell? You're not married, as I put say that to the location or the concept. You know, look at what Hillbillies did. They kept changing what they did. They're not just shaved ice anymore. They're not just 10 flavors. They added a bunch of things as well. And I'm sure they took away things that didn't work. So you're not married to it. Or the location. One of my biggest struggles in starting our shaved ice business, because I wanted a location where we were set up at, which like I have today, is the first couple I tried, they didn't work. They just, people didn't come out to it for whatever reason until they found the right spot. So doing this way, you're not necessarily married to that. The other thing you're not married to is this, and this is how you can test the waters is, have you considered this? What if you start this? What if you put all this money and time and effort into, into building an expensive business up and running? And in the end, you're like, I hate this. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm not enjoying it. This is a way to test it without as much risk or as much expense up front. Now, whether why, the other reasons why the method works is that you make money doing it. You may not make as much as you do if you have an established business where you're there every day, but you make good money doing it as well. You get experience, you get reps, and then you can really build that customer base so that you can go out and do other things. You can keep expanding what else you want to do. So that's why I think in a startup like this is a better method and a better model. So let's talk about that elephant in the room again, okay? What about that $2,000 startup cost? You're probably still looking at this thing like, man, that's that's how can we only do it for that? So what I've done is I've broken everything down and looked at, hey, how can you realistically doing this do this for about uh, for less than two thousand dollars? So building into here about a thousand dollars of supplies you'd buy at Amazon, and I have exactly the supplies you need, the links you need. Most of this is stuff that we use in our business on a daily basis, as it is. A few things you need to buy from a local uh, local Walmart to kind of get your your stuff up and running. You know, like sugar, for example, or ice cream or whipped cream and stuff to just kind of get get yourself. Uh, uh, going locally. You can't necessarily order that online. Ice, you're going to need some ice to get going with shaved ice business. Um, you're going to need to buy things from a shaved ice specific vendor. So your concentrates or maybe your mixing bottles, or there's certain things you need to get from a shaved ice uh, a vendor and the local permits. Even if you start at a farmer's market, there's most, most markets still have some requirements you need to meet um, in order to be legal. It could be like a business tax receipt or a mobile food vendor or some smaller things like that. Honestly, it's way easier to do it for that instead of trying to get established in a food truck or definitely easier than a brick and mortar business. But in the end, it's going to be less than $2,000 of equipment and supplies and things that you're going to need to buy in order to kind of get, in order to get yourself up, up and running. So why is the cost so low? That's be another question that I would kind of ask myself as I'm, as I'm looking at this and thinking about this. It kind of comes down to this. You're not paying for an expensive truck, trailer, or a build-out. You know, even when we bought our trailer, there was work that needed to be done on it. Or if you buy a trailer that's up and running, you know, I've seen some of them from as low as, say, maybe $10,000 up as high as $50,000. They're expensive investment into that. Or some of my students that I've worked with have done brick-and-mortar locations. Um, there's, It's a lot to build that out. So you're not paying for any of that. The other big place you're going to save on costs is your machine. <coughs> Excuse me. There are... Um, I, I have, I'm not going to grab them now, but I use Swan machines, for example, they're $2,000 a piece. They're expensive machines, but there's another machine that you can get that will get you started. It's a great starter machine. It's what we used when I started our business. It's not a workhorse, meaning if you're going to have a busy shop every single day, it's, it's going to have a hard time keeping up with that, but we use it for events. We've used it at tabletop. We've used it at markers and mar markets, excuse me, and festivals and things like that. And it's a great machine to get you started until you decide this is something that you want to get up and running and you want to grow into bigger and bigger and you want to invest later in the $2,000 machine or you want to do. So it's, it's, a, it's a great money saver there. Um, you're also buying just enough supplies to get yourself up and running. So you don't have to buy as many supplies as you would for a, a or excuse me, for a busy shop. And with that, I'm going to show you exactly like here's the essentials of things that you need to do. It's not necessarily the extras. It's the essentials. You know, I, I look back at some of the things we bought to kind of get the business up and running. I was figuring it out. And, and now I know exactly the kind of like a, like a sniper, like here's the only the things that you need to really get up and running and get this thing established and really going to make your business work. So we'll walk you through different things like that. Now, what's going to happen if you kind of start with this? You're going to get tons of experience, right? You're going to be able to go out every day or every time you go to an event and you're going to have a bunch of people standing there wanting your product and you're going to have to get the experience of making it well and making good and learning. You know, there's so much of this business, 
is learning. You can have all the mentors and all the courses and all the trainings and stuff like that to get you up and running, but you still have to go out there and do the work. I remember our first day we opened up the shop. There was a kind of a line there and I had practiced a ton, but I was still like, oh man, like there's people here. It was a totally different feel than when I was practicing inside my kitchen. So you're going to get some good experience with it. You're going to decide, decide, as I said before, if you really like doing this or not. Is it something that is going to be helpful for you? Is it some, or, or enjoyable for you? Is it the type of business that you want to be in? You'll be able to grow your fans as we talked about, and then you can turn this into catering events. So this is the next part of this, this equation, if you will. Once you go out and do the, the farmer market and the festival events and all that, while you're there, you can book or you can you know get customers for catering events. This could be weddings. It could be birthday parties. Corporate events are incredible to go do. You might find out about the little leagues and other sporting and things. And while, because you're at the farmer's market and you're selling a good product, you're going to get a lot of exposure and a lot of potential opportunity to go out and to do some other events as well. So this is a place for you to be able to go out and really get yourself established so that you can be doing more, uh, more types of events. So if I were in your shoes now, I'd probably be asking these questions. How do I find events? Like, how do I go all about and do that? Where are the events that I need to be doing? Um, what do I need, need to do to actually be illegal, uh, to be legal, not illegal, to be legal with this? What do I need to be legal? Everything I'm going to teach you and everything I do in our, all of our training programs, I'm a big believer. You've got to be legal, be compliant. Don't try to cut corners, be compliant. Cause you don't want to get in trouble with things down the road. So we'll show you how to do that as well. What's the best equipment you, you should get the supplies you should get. As I said, we have the whole list. How do you even make shaved ice? Many of the people I've talked to there, that's one of the things they're worried about most is like, how do I even, how do I even make a cup of ice? How do I get the, the texture the right? How do I know how much how to, uh, a syrup to pour in? How do I make it look good? How do I make it taste good? How do I make syrup? All those different types of things. You might be asking yourself, what about you know menu as well? Like what type of menu do I need? What do I need to put on my menu? How do I put this all together? And I've got a lot, a lot of answers for that. So um, we put together something that's a little bit unique from our, our, our Shaved Ice Academy program. So Shaved Ice Academy, as I said, it walks you through a, a lot of different things about establishing a truck or trailer or brick and mortar business. But I have a program that it breaks down seven lessons to specifically walk you through how to establish and how to get started in a uh, shaved ice business with, with this type of thing that, I was, that I'm telling you about. How to do the farmer's markets, how to answer all those questions I just showed you a second ago. Um, I give you all the supply lists as well. The Amazon links, um, you just go through and click them. I think it was about $1,000 you'd spend on Amazon. Um, exactly what uh, vendor that I use the most, that I like the most for my shaved ice supplies, what machine do you need to get? All those different things um, will give you exactly how to do that. Resources and how to find events. There's some great ways to do it. Facebook uh, Marketplace, um, Facebook, you can search for events. There's a couple of mark, um, sorry, farmer market specific um, uh, websites out there. In fact, there's a bunch of websites that I found that will give you some good local events as well as contact information about how to get into those local events. I'll walk you through uh, the recipe. So how to make the syrup, how to um, make your flavors, how to get all that up and running, give you ideas from uh, for menus and templates for those as well that ties into our food and ice program and really kind of help you um, get everything up and running. On top of that, I'll give you some support for me, unlimited support. So you'll be able to get in touch with me anytime you have questions or things that you need. And I'll walk you through how to answer anything. I, I learned enough of this. Everybody kind of has a unique angle or unique side uh, thing that they're trying to do. So we can look at your specific situation and I make sure that we give you the, all the, the help for that. So this is a program you want to be in. Here's kind of how it works. Um, we're going to do, uh, before the end of the month, I'm going to do a live in-person training session where we roll up our sleeves and we go through the specifics of everything that we talked about here. Go through every single thing, all the different steps that you need in order to establish this. Um, we'll help you find uh, events live uh, on the spot. I'll give you all the lists on the supplies that you need to buy. Walk through all the different seven steps of how to practice, how to create a menu, how to um, get yourself out there, what you need to, uh, to get, how to make money, how to turn it into other events down the road. I'll walk you through everything. And in that, on that training and on that call, you're going to do a fully open Q&A, meaning you have any question you want to talk about, we'll answer everything you possibly have. That will all be recorded and those recordings will be available to you after they're processed and all that. You'll have them for life. Um, you'll have the supply list. You'll have everything you need. And as I mentioned, you'll be able to get in touch with me even after our call. If you have questions and things you want a little bit of help, I'll be happy to um, to really kind of get you established with that and answer anything you have, anything you need there. So the program for this, it's a $597 program. Now, I want you to stop and think about that for a second. 600 bucks, if you were to go out to an event and work at a busy farmer's market, 
you'll make that $600 back day one easily. It's not, it's not too hard to make $600 at a farmer's market event. So you're immediately going to recoup the cost of that. Um, you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to, yeah, make this worthwhile for you. So if it's something you're interested, you want to be a part of, you can scan the QR code right there, or you can uh, go to that website link, sweet-profits.com slash shaved ice biz. And I'll accept a few people in this. I'm going to accept about five or so people into this at a time because my time's precious right now. We are um, in the middle of getting our business uh, kind of revamped and we're opening again here in a little bit once the season changes some. Um, we got a lot of things going on in life um, that I'm only going to have a handful of people that I'm accepting this just because of my time and my bandwidth and my ability to do it. So if it's something you want to be a part of, scan that code right there and click on the link. You know, I think a lot about when, when I got started in, in this business and frankly, when I got started in any business, the number one thing that helped every time was the right mentor and the right training. So whoever could guide me on giving me all the steps and all the guidance and all the, all the help with that, that's the thing that was the shortcut. That was the thing, not even just the shortcut. That's the thing that made sure that I was successful in doing this. Even the shaved ice world, there was a, one specific shop that um, the owner since has sold it to someone else. They want to do something. Um, but there was one specific shop in Missouri that helped me more than anybody. And they were my mentor and my guide. And there was the person I called. And unfortunately, back then, there was no live training class. There was no courses. There was nothing. There was just trial and error. And trial and error is great. But man, I would have loved to have you. In fact, I remember one day my wife and I trying to you know, get things up and running. I was like, where's the person I can just go pay $5,000 to right now? And they walk me through how to do all this. It, did, it wasn't there and it didn't exist. <clears throat> but today for you guys, it does exist. It's something that I'm happy to help you out to and help you get established and up and running. The other thing I want, to think, I want you to think about as well, right now it's middle of January. Um, this whole process, it only takes a couple of weeks to tell you the truth. You can be out by February, depending on the area you're at and, and you know, weather and all that. But you can be out by February actually making money into this business. This isn't something that's like way down the road. This is something that quickly you can get established and you can recoup that investment. And the rest of the spring and the summer is just profit for you or your ability to save more money and to grow into the next thing that you want to do or keep building or keep growing. This isn't something that has to take a long time. But I want you to imagine that for a little bit. You know, I've had a, a lot of my dreams where I have kept in neutral, meaning I've sat there and I've thought about it. And I was like, yeah, maybe I'll get started with it. But I never invested in it. I never found the help. I never got started. I just sat there. And then the dream never happened for whatever reason. Thankfully, I've had other dreams, many other dreams, Shaved Ice Business being one of them, this webinar and this, this whole movement being another one of them, where I did follow that. I got the, the, the resources I need. I got the help. I got the mentor. And I established it. And now that dream is real. So today I sit there and I look back. I was like, man, that dream is real. It's very cool. I was actually just talking to my wife earlier today about something else where we were, we have happening in life. My daughter has been um, a, a year ago. She she went um, left the house and she's doing some cool things on her own. She's been busy and she's serving and working and doing doing things. And we're saying like, man, can you believe it's been a year since that all started? And I was like, man, I wish every day for the past year I would have worked out for an hour. That's that's what I was talking to my wife about. I didn't, so I don't have the the shape that I would have had had I worked out for an hour every day for the past year. I have some other things I'm happy with. It's not that this is a sad story necessarily. But I just think, I just keep feeling about, I just keep thinking about, man, if you just take the leap, if you just kind of get started. So if you're sitting here right now and you're still on this and you're thinking about it and you're like, ah, do I want to do it? Do I not want to do it? Am I not sure? Think about where you'd be in two or three months from now. If you don't, you'll probably be sitting here kind of having the same argument, same debate. Like, ah, should I have done that? I want to do it. It might be great. Or we can get you in a couple of months, much sooner than actually, we can make this real for you. You could be out there with your own business, having that freedom that you want, making money. And you know, the cool part about this, having talked about it at all, is the happiness that, that you serve. You know, we, we always say uh, one of our cheesy catchphrases, we're happiness in a cup. And I've had countless times in our shop when somebody will walk up and I'm just kids. It could be an adult, it could be a grown, grown man looking kind of grumpy, looking kind of sad. Maybe they've had a rough day or whatever. And we, you know, we make their, you know, we have butter beer is one of our most popular ones. We make them their butter beer and we put the ice cream in it and the whipped cream on top and we make them their shave ice and we hand it to them. And immediately you see the stress kind of melt and the happiness show up and like, oh yeah. And they take a bite and they're happy with it. There's a genuine happiness that comes with doing a business like this. Um, maybe that's a little cheesier than some of you like, I don't care. Uh, it makes me, it makes me feel good. It makes me smile thinking about that. So 
I want you to really stop and think about those different things. Is this something that you want to even try and see? This is a minimal uh, investment. The other thing I didn't mention as well, 597 up front is a little steep for you. We have payment plans available up to two months or three months payment plans available. So if you need to spread that out a little bit, it's on the checkout page. You can go ahead and do that. So if you're, if you, if you like to go ahead and scan that code or um, go to that link there, sweet-profits.com slash shaved ice biz, go ahead and get started with it. You're going to be personally mentored and coached and directed by me. We're going to get you up and running. Um, you'll have the full list of everything. I see some of the questions that come in about, about the spreadsheet and machines and stuff like that. We provide all that for you. Um, you can get, get it going and it'll be really, really, really successful for you. So I hope a lot of you join us and are part of this. So that's all I had for today there, guys. Uh, I've enjoyed uh, talking to you today. I enjoyed doing this. If you have other topics you'd like to talk about, you'd like to learn about, let me know. We have a bunch of classes scheduled here for the future. Um, but if anything, go out, get started with this, go do something, go make some money, go get yourself the freedom that you want, and you can have a really, really cool business. So thanks for spending some time with me today. I appreciate all of you, and uh, I'll talk to you guys again really soon.